Da Vinci. Da Vinci was awesome. And Da Vinci believed that the sensus communis, judgment and soul, are located in the third ventricle of the brain. And the reason why I think this is awesome is because what's inside the third ventricle? Liquid, water, cranial spinal fluid. Da Vinci was the one of the early pioneers that it was recorded, I should say, because we don't even know who that was, if even if it was a who, that was explaining that the soul is uh, not physical, there's not an organ, that the soul is uh, running, much like a program would in a piece of software, inside the liquid crystals of your cranial spinal fluid. Just fascinating idea. And if you follow the third ventricle, you'll understand that, uh, that not only does it produce these uh, liquid horns that kind of stab on top. You have upper horns and lower horns. You have antlers. But these antlers are made out of liquid. And that not only that, but they actually end up touching your cranial spinal fluid that goes all the way up and down your spine, which means you really do have this large liquid antenna. And that that antenna itself, the processes inside of that, is what Leonardo called the soul. It was the pool, the lady of the lake inside the ventricle, was basically who you were. It's a beautiful, beautiful definition, I think. Uh, this dude, Lodfer, Girolamo Fracastoro, uh, 15th century. Noted the necessity of a single cerebral organ which could act in the integration and coordination of all sensory perceptions captured by the body. And he said it was the canarium. You and I know the canarium is the pineal gland. And just so you know, the pineal gland is actually uh, suspended inside that uh, third ventricle. So it does touch the uh, cranial spot of fluid. In fact, um, I've argued that the pineal, the pulse of your heart, is uh, squeezing that pineal, which is full of uh, piezoelectric crystals. Those crystals uh, expand and contract through the pulsing of your heart. And your entire ventricle system, the liquid inside your ventricle, acts like a sonar buoy or a sonar dome on a submarine that sends and receives perturbation signals that come through the liquid of your ventricle and paint for you your entire reality's map. If you're interested in this idea, please look up the Eye of Ra. There's a couple of videos about that that I've done that explain this idea more. But basically, Girolamo was sort of on that page, although I'm not going to throw him directly into my corner because I don't know how far he went except for just to re really say, I believe it's the pineal gland, and I really love this fur coat. These douches, I mean, these dudes, Calvin, Martin Luther... They're, they're, they're fine. They're fine. Nothing wrong with them. But uh, they basically were both arguing that the soul was uh, indestructible, but that the soul persisted as consciousness after death, said Calvin, while Martin said, no, 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 the soul dies. It, it stops working until it's resurrected again from the bone. That the uh, holy bone itself would be resurrected and you would be alive again. So Martin Luther believed that you soul sort of had like an on-off switch, and you could turn the soul back on, or, or God could, as Martin would say. And uh, once it's turned back on, you're on. Calvin would, would say, no, 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 consciousness remains forever, even after death. Again, this is going back into that realm of, of ideals, right? We have these uh, ideal uh, hypothetical realms that are outside of this place. That really is theism, and that, I think, is problematic because when, when theism was invented, all of your definitions of what God was and what the soul was had to change because really with theism came the idea that this whole place is profane unless we create a certain space inside of this profanity and sprinkle it with holy water or bless it or make it holy or make it uh, divine. Or sacred, I should say. And so theism, the first thing theism did was to declare the entire world profane. Dead, materialistic, doesn't have a soul. And you start to see a lot of thinkers uh, carry this idea to extremes. 
where you have just asinine, retarded people trying to tell you, well, only my dog doesn't have soul, but, but that dude has a soul over there. And I totally understand why that's the case. You, you, that's what theism does. It, it leads really dumb people down really, really awful uh, ideologies where they end up uh, in a cosmetics company like torching animals because they insist, but it, God told me that they don't have a soul, so it's totally okay. And Revlon is great. I get a pink car and whatever. So it's a, it's a evolution, believe it or not. We're getting there, though. We're getting there. You'll see. Council of Trent actually decided. They took a vote. And they said, look, guys, here's the soul, right? There are three types of human souls. Intellectual, sensory, and vegetative. Three types of souls. Sorry, there's a typo there. Intellectual, sensory, and vegetative. Again, they declared most of the world to be soulless or on the lowest form of soul, soulable, soulability. And the humans were the highest ideal. Robert Burton uh, wrote this book, The Anatomy of Melancholy. Uh, Spirit is a subtle vapor produced from the blood and is the instrument of the soul to carry out its actions. And I love this idea because in the 16th century, people were serious still about magic. Animism was still alive, but it was locked in sorcery. And that's really what Robert's telling you. He was explaining to you that your heart charges your red blood cells with will. The will that, that it wants you to do, that those red blood cells are receiving that charge of will and going out and fulfilling uh, the promise that, that, that your heart uh, d- decreed for them to do. And so the soul itself was expressed through the blood, that the blood uh, holds these things. And if you've heard about Excalibur, you know that the symbol of uh, hemoglobin itself is very symbolically holding a scabbard. It has a built-in scabbard that iron sticks inside of, which we call breathing. <laughs> So inside the heart, the uh, Lady of the Lake is taking the sword and, and shoving it inside uh, the hemoglobin, the stone. And that stone is being delivered to the very tips of your fingers and at the very end, the capillary, uh, being decreed by its king author, uh, being decreed by Merlin himself, is able to pull the sword from the stone, the stone, pull the iron from the hemoglobin, and write or draw or shoot an arrow, or strike a sword, or stabby stabby, or or whatever else, that your will itself is expressed through the red blood cells, and their desire that was forged in the crucible of the heart. I love this idea. It's one of my favorite concepts as far as like what a soul is.